bought this KTM map switch. I'm not going to tell you how to fit it. There's plenty of videos on that. It's what I found about the switch and how it works. Slightly disgruntled, especially for the money. There's part number. It's on an EXCF. This is the 250, but this fits a number of bikes throughout the range of different CCs and models. So this is what you get is this little uh, potentiometer pack with nine separate detents, separate positions. So to explain how this works, one, when that's in position one, on a four stroke, it even says LC4 there, um, well, I didn't know they still made those, but yeah, there you go. Standard ignition timing map. So it's exactly as the bike is without one of these switches. Position two is the map how you want it to be, which is where this comes in here, this little pot. So in position two, if you have this on position one, so you see the little numbers there, so when that there lines up with the number you desire, that's the map you get. So when this is in position two, so when that is there, it will give you whatever you set this pot to. So in position one on here, forget that, two selects this. In position one, it will give you wet conditions. In two, it will give you advanced aggressive. And three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and zero just returns you back to the standard ignition timing. So if you set it in any of those at the bottom, it's absolutely useless. Why did you buy a switch when you could have just stayed in the standard? So you can only have on setting two, this at position one or position two. One, wet, two, advanced. Now, for your 80 odd quid, some places it's, it's dearer, you get this. So you don't get new bolts, you just get this. So what you got here is just an on off switch. That's all this is. You can see the little plunger in there, not particularly well protected. Can't see no resin or gunk coming out the end, so that's just going to be some sort of melt fit. That is free to slide. Cables are vulnerable there. Pressure washing, a few fall offs. Why was that not molded to that? Why is this not protected? So we've got to put some tape here. The switch itself, what you would normally see is a little ball and detent, like a detent, like a ball on a spring, and it would click and it would be nice. This is just simply plastic in a groove that jumps out of a groove and into another groove. There is no detent there. You are twisting the head, straining the head of the switch. Bearing in mind this is 80 quid. And this simply, what the switch does is either, so this here, this one here, that goes to the plug that we'll come to in a minute. So in position one, that there, it links the two terminals. There you go, that's position one. There you go, that's one position one. So in position two, it, it breaks those terminals, okay? And it says to the pair that goes in, have a chat with this end of the lead here because you weren't doing nothing before on number one, it sends it up to here. This is connected to this here. So when you put it in position two, 
is the only time it chats to this here. Before then it does nothing. So all that is is an on off switch. Either make the leads permanently, it's position one, the two ends, or break them and involve this in the circuit, it's position two. It's just an on off switch. 80 quid, okay? So this little pot here, so going back to the map, in position one on here, okay, this should be a wet, position one, wet condition, gentle power development, okay? That gives you 15,000 ohm resistance. On position two, which is your aggressive, okay, so turn that onto position two. Now that gives you about 7,000. So my point here is, if you add a 15,000 and a 7,000 resistor, thereabouts, you could do away with all this and just wire straight across this plug here, because that's what it fits to. That sits in that hole there doing absolutely nothing. There's no plug, it's just a blank, it's just a dummy. And it simply seals around the outside to keep this. There's absolutely nothing in that hole at all. So it's just a blanking cap that's just fixed to the bike. Okay, so that sits in there. So if you used to put a resistor across this, what was it, 1.7 and 1.15, you would be creating the same effect as that switch, but giving yourself the additional selection so you're with me on that switch you can either have a standard or or a wet or a standard or an aggressive you can't have the three which leads me to my point there's another manufacturer of the switch that gives you a standard mild and ag aggressive so they are simply creating those two resistors within a switch at your handlebars here so they've got the resistor pack at the handlebars. Uh, and then obviously the, 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 the standard is the standard. There's no connection to this plug. So the purpose of this video is just to really make you realise what you are getting for your money. You're getting two resistors and an on-off switch. What I'm going to do here is just put a bit of black RTV, which is like a good quality silicon, in here. Uh, and then simply slide that up. I'm not going to go mad, I'm just going to create a seal at the top. Interestingly enough, I've just noticed that. Look at the damage to that. Probably where it's been clamped. See the insulation damage there? 80 quid. So with, once you're threaded to the back here, there's the two plugs. The one from here connects into there. Got this one here. Plug that into your little pot. I've got this set on two which is the uh, aggressive, as they call it. The only reason being is um, I'm trying to practice getting over obstacles and I'm not too good at it at the moment. So uh, I'm hoping that can help. It's not particularly a mode I want to stay in. I would rather have the wet mode, as they call it. Oh, hang on a minute. I've got to repair that dodgy lead, haven't I? 
there's clearly an issue with the quality control as well if that gets through i just put a bit of tape around that just to protect it i didn't want to start cutting and joining wires that aren't actually split when it's just the insulation so i'd really like to put that going downwards but i feel that the plug and the leads will interfere when you're changing the air filter with the metal so it's actually got to go upwards which is now vulnerable to water ingress um i can't see no other way and even the bracket that this slides onto here isn't really long enough to do the job it doesn't even come out the top here unless i'm missing something there's no other brackets on this bike anywhere that would do that job so I fail to see where that goes other than there. So to help with a bit of the water sitting on these terminals here, I'm going to again take this little bit of area up. In the end, I've just ended up taping it up. I just, there's so much tape trying to protect things and make excuses for poor terminations. I've just taped all the ends up. It's loom tape, not electrical tape. You know, the more I work on KTMs, the more I miss my Honda. So if you doubt what you've done or anything you've done on this very simple circuit, in position one on the handlebar control, you should have... A complete no resistance circuit okay so that's just a straight through connector and in position two we have the almost uh, 7000 ohms uh, because we're going through the pot and the pot is set on um, aggressive as they call it so there we go so that's 7000 back to position one on the handlebar and that gives us a uh, closed circuit all right the only thing to do now is try it um, I'm not the person without a dyno to start talking about power outputs and stuff like that. That's not my area that I wish to discuss. Um, but I'm going to go out for a little blast now and see if it makes any difference. So, you know what? It works. It's fun. I think it's going to improve my riding. It's certainly helping me to get over obstacles. And it's nice to then resort back to the standard mat when it's uh, a bit tricky on the surface and you need to take some of the snap out. Does it make the bike faster? Arguably, yes, but really that's not what it's about. It's about how the power is delivered. Um, and yes, it's successful. But myself personally, if I'd known what I'd known about how the switch is made and what you get for your money... And how it's lacking having three different modes for the sake of putting a better quality switch up there. Then I would have bought the, I think it's the Trail Tech one. Because that gives you the three modes. Yes, you can get the three modes with this. But you have to take your seat off and adjust it. And that's just so unnecessary. If they'd put a better switch up here. Like the Trail Tech one. None of this would have happened. Yes, that's more stylish. Yes, that's more in keeping. The other one's a little bit garish, a bit. Look at me, I'm modified. But value for money, I've got to say, the Trail Tech one's probably better. Not that I've tried it, but that's what I would have put my money on if I'd had a choice again. So, the bike without anything fitting here. So, from the ECU, you've got an open circuit. This isn't plugged into anything at all there it's cut off there 
and it's shoved in that little hole. So whether you've got a complete open circuit, so that connection not made to that connection, or whether it's plugged in and in mode one, so a closed circuit across here, or an open circuit across here, gives you the same map. So no resistance, all the resistance, gives you the same map, the same standard map. Not like you will see on some of the KTMs where you plug one wire in, it gives you something. Pull wire out, it gives you something else. That's not the case with this bike. Metering across this side of it, so this is the plug now. Metering across, this is the equipment that you buy from that plug to that plug and that variable resistor. Metering across there when it's not plugged in with that switch made, so that's closed, gives you a that is directly connected to that, a closed loop. Okay, so that switch is made closed loop. Now crudely, how they switch it to have a look at the variable resistor down here, the pot, is just by simply opening that loop. So instead of it taking the easier path, the path of least resistance, so that if that's down, that's in mode one, in, in map one, Rather than taking the easiest resistance, it now has to take the harder resistance and look at the pot here. Again, this is another thing I have trouble. I would have switched the circuits, not just made an easier or a harder path. And this comes to the point, they've only took two wires up here. If they, well, we'll come to the other bit in a bit, but that's how this works. So, they break that, it then starts to look at the resistor. So the resistor under the seat, okay, that you plug in as part of the kit, either you can set that resistor to be again itself a closed loop, and that's where it says in the instruction book, it says setting this on zero gives you uh, a standard map. Setting it on one, gives you one map, setting it you on two, gives you another. So all you're doing in this part is you are selecting a 15K resistor or a 7K resistor. These are approximates. Or you're selecting a closed loop. Okay? And that's all that switch does. So for your £80, British pounds, some places it's more, some it's slightly less, you are getting... A crude circuit, a pot that doesn't properly locate within the bike, some damaged wiring, an on-off switch onto a very dated pot for £80. And I'm having trouble with that bit. So this is the, forgive me if I'm wrong, I haven't checked this off the top of my head when I was researching, I think it's the trail tech. So the trail tech setup, bearing in mind it's like for like on the money, you get this. So you plug it straight into the engine, okay, goes up to your handlebars, you have your closed loops still, that gives you your standard map. Or it could even be a simple open circuit, a fully open circuit, like it is when you first buy the bike, like I explained here. You then select it to mild, you connect to that resistor, down, or you select it to the aggressive, you simply flip the switch from, I think it's standard mild and aggressive, or wild or something they've called it. Um, and that's it, you just simply, at the handlebars, selects the three maps. So why couldn't they do that? Why do you have to go under the seat to adjust it to make map two different? So that's how it works. So just to clarify here on the switch, so there's your position one, which you can't adjust. Your position two looks at whatever this is set at down here. So position one is, is your mild, your, um, I'm trying to think what else everybody else calls it, in your mild anyway, your wet condition. Position two is 
your advanced, your aggressive power delivery. But you can't select between those two unless you take the seat off your bike and adjust this. So all these numbers here are all ir irrelevant. You don't use it. You only use one and two because standard is available in position one. 